what's up guys today i'm going to go through how i edited these hyperlapses in final cut pro and if you don't know what a hyperlapse is it's basically exactly the same as a time lapse but every photo you take you move the camera position to create this moving time lapse and every photo you take you need to keep the subject in the same position on the camera screen and you can do that using the grids on the camera screen and also trying your best to keep the camera at the same height and keeping it level also helps a lot when it comes to stabilizing these. So the first thing I'm going to do is import all of my photos that I've taken. You used to be able to just drag photos into the timeline, but now with the newer updates, it won't let you do that. So you have to import them into an event. So what I'm going to do is go up here to file and go to import media. And then I'm going to find the photos that I've taken which are in this folder on my desktop. So I'm going to select the folder and then just click import all. So now I have all of my photos up here from the hyperlapse that I did. So I'm going to select them all. You can click and drag all of the photos or you can just press command A on the keyboard to select them all if they're all in one event. And then I'm just going to import them into my timeline. I'm going to press command A on the keyboard to select them all. And then I'm going to press right click and go to change duration. And then I'm going to press one on the keyboard to change each photo into one frame. Click enter. So now if I zoom back in, so now I have all of my photos in order. And if this was a stationary time lapse, then that would be finished right now. What I could do is select all of the clips, right click and go to new compound clip. So now all of my photos are in one nice compound clip and I can edit this. I can put it into my timeline, but because this is a hyperlapse, it needs a lot of stabilization so that it looks smooth and it looks good. So the next thing I'm going to do is export this into a 4K video file. So I'm going to go up here to my export button and I'm going to go to the settings and I'm going to go to mastering video and audio. And then I'm going to select Apple ProRes. 422 HQ. Make sure that the resolution is in 4K. And then I'm going to click next. And I'm just going to save this. So I'm going to delete the time lapse in the timeline. And then I'm going to drag in the new video that we just made. And I'm going to create a proxy file for this so that it's easier to edit. So just right click, go to transcode media, and then you can create a proxy file. And then up here, on the view, I'm just going to click proxy only so that it just makes this a lot easier to edit. So now we have the video file. What I can do is go click on the video clip, go over to the parameters. And now I now because it's a video clip, I can add stabilization. And this method of stabilization is only going to work on 50% of hyperlapses. So I'm actually going to use an effect plugin from Pixel Film Studios. So if I go over here to effects, and go down to Pixel Film Studios Stabilizer. I can use the stabilizer on this, drag it on just like an effect. And then I'm gonna go over to the parameters and I'm going to tick Stabilize On and also Apply Rotation Data. And then I'm gonna go into the Track Editor. And I'm gonna go up to the Tracking Options and select Position and Rotation. And then I'm going to move this track window to a point with high contrast on the subject that I want to stabilize. So around about there. And then I'm just going to click on the arrow up here. So now it'll go through the frames and, and track the subject so that it stays in one position. So once all the keyframes are created, you can also delete keyframes if the tracker has gone off position by just holding down Alt and clicking on the keyframes but this track looks pretty good so i'm just going to click export data and then close this window so now if i play this back it should be way smoother so once you're happy with the track then you can click on the video clip and we can move this what you can also do is keyframe the rotation and scale to add some movement to the video so i'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning and then go to the end. I'm just going to add some rotation and also some scale. 
So now that I have the movement added and I'm happy with how the hyperlapse is looking, there's one more effect that I like to add to add a bit of motion blur to give it that fast paced look and to smooth out the stabilization even more. And that is RSMB. Because these are photos stitched together, the normal motion blur that I use doesn't really work because that's designed for video. So I'm gonna go over here to my effects tab and go down to revision effects. And I'm just gonna to add the RSMB onto this video clip. And I'm going to, up here in the parameters, I'm going to tick the use GPU acceleration. Just helps with rendering and it's a bit faster. And I'm also going to turn down the motion blur settings just a bit. So I'm gonna put this down to 0.3. And then I'm just quickly going to add a color grading LUT from my LUT pack. You can check it out, the link is in the description. If you like all the colors that I use, then it's really easy to get the same colors with my LUT pack. You just add on the custom LUT effect and select a LUT. For this one, I'm using the A3 LUT, which is a new one. So I'll update the pack um, today, just so this looks a bit better for the before and after. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Some hyperlapses you can get away with using the Final Cut Pro stabilizer, and then some you'll need the tracking stabilizer plugin to smooth it out. And sometimes it's good to use a combination of both. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll leave all the links down below to the plugins that I used, and I'll see you in the next video.